One of these men is the winner of the first transatlantic solo sailing race in history. What is your name, please? My name is Francis Chichester. What is your name, please? My name is Francis Chichester. What is your name, please? My name is Francis Chichester. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Francis Chichester and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Jim Fleming. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Camel Cigarettes. And sitting in again for Bud Collier, it becomes my most agreeable duty to introduce our sparkling, spirited, and altogether knowledgeable panel. Here they are. First, Mr. Tom Poston. Next, Miss Kitty Carlisle, Robert Q. Lewis, and finally, Miss Polly Bergen. <laughs> Robert Q, I understand you're bringing joy and laughter to the summer circuit with the gazebo. Is this so? Yes, sir. Having a ball. Looking forward to Indianapolis, Avondale Playhouse next, and then Canada. Yes. Well, yes. lots of luck, and open up your affidavits now and get down to work right here, will you, panel? And please follow along with me as I read this first affidavit. I, Francis Chichester, am a map publisher by vocation and a yachtsman by avocation. On June 11th, I sailed from Plymouth, England, alone aboard my 40-foot sloop, and on July 21st, after battling a series of North Atlantic gales, I arrived in New York. I won the first transatlantic solo sailing race in history and broke the transatlantic solo sailing record by 16 days. Signed, Francis Chichester. Well, panel, all three of these gentlemen claim to be the real Francis Chichester, and having pronounced it three times, I'm very proud of myself, the winner of the first transatlantic solo sailing race. And let's begin our questioning now with uh, Miss Polly Bergen. Uh, number one, you were on this sloop all by yourself? All by myself, yes. Well, uh, uh, um, yes. what happened when you slept? Well, I slept when I could. Well, I mean, did you drop anchor, or did oh, you... Oh, no, uh, I sailed all the time. All my boats sailed for me. Your boat, uh, uh, Do sloops have automatic pilots? <laughs> <laughs> There's one, Monster. You got yourself oh. into this. Well, no, I mean, I just think that's amazing. Uh, I mean, uh, h how much off would you go during the time you were sleeping? Well, my boat actually turned in circles. I know it sounds silly, but it did. Does that answer your question, Polly? No, he's right. It sounds silly. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom Poston, please. Thank you. Uh, let me see. Mr. Sister, sir, sir, number three. <laughs> in uh, in uh, water terms or Navy terms, what are uh, sails called? What? S sail. Uh, anything else, number two? No, I've never used any other expression. Number three, uh, number two, <laughs> keep out of this, number three, number two. <laughs> what did you say? Uh, what are sails known as familiarly in uh, nautical terms? Sails, I think. I, Job, I bet you're right, too. <laughs> <laughs> number one, what is luffing? That means uh, when the wind comes against you and you let some of the wind out of your sail. Uh, number two, do you agree with that? Yes, that sounds very good. Sounds like... <laughs> right, but it's very good. Uh, uh, Kitty, Kitty? Number one, what is yawing? Yawing is when the boat falls off from the wind against your will. Number two, uh, what did you cook for yourself? I cooked some very nice potatoes and um, I had some uh, salmon in a tin. Number two, can you tell me who met you in New York? My wife. <laughs> she was smart. She flew over. <laughs> Did she fly? No, she came by a ship. Number three, how long is your sloop? Forty-five feet. From 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 bow to stern. About stern, yes. 
Thank you. Uh, Robert Q. Well, I, I don't know very much about slooping. I mean, I know you can <laughs> you can go luffing and yawing and sleeping while you're slooping. <laughs> what is uh, number three? What is, uh, we know what luffing and uh, yawing are. What is craning, please? That number two, to... craning. How do you spell it? C-R-A-N-I-N-G, craning. Never heard of it. Number one, craning. I've heard of it. All right. Uh, number one, when you landed uh, here in New York, uh, did you land at a marina, or uh, where did you land? Uh, I landed at Staten Island. At uh, uh, Staten Island. One of our better arenas, yeah. marinas. Right. And number two, uh, where on Staten Island did you land? At the, at the wall. Sounds logical, and it's... <laughs> All right, it's time to vote, panel. Well, so mean, now, I'm without without any consultation, Polly, will you mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three? And our team of challengers will receive two hundred and fifty dollars for each incorrect vote. And have you voted, panel? And are you ready to report? Tom Poston, may we have your decision? I don't want to make a fibber out of you, but that introduction you gave us a brilliant and charming and uh, literate and knowledgeable. This is liable to be disproved in this particular go-around. I still voted for number two, but I hope your introduction holds up this afternoon. You've never seen my complete introduction. I, I do this below the... <laughs> <laughs> Kitty, for whom did you vote? I voted for number two. I saw a picture of Mr. Chichester arriving in New York being kissed by his wife. I only saw the back of his head, but I think that number two looks like that's the back of his head. <laughs> Sir Robert, Robert Q. I don't know. I, I, I like number three. Uh, that mustache looks like it's weathered a lot of yawing and slooping. <laughs> and loving. <laughs> Polly? <laughs> well, I mean, what I know about slooping, <laughs> you can't even start to imagine. Well. I, number one looks like he's been going around in circles. <laughs> well, the votes are all in, and our minds are made up, and now let's find out which of these three gentlemen is the winner of the first transatlantic solo sailing race. Will the Rio, Francis Chichester, please stand up? <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, uh, number one, will you tell us who you are and what you really do? My name is Ralph Champion. I'm the chief United, Corres uh, United States correspondent for the London Daily Mirror. Well, you're a champion on the panel, too. <laughs> uh, number three, how about you? My name is Gordon Bullock, and I'm the agency manager of a major overseas airline. Well, I... I'm delighted to see there have been two incorrect votes. That means a total of $500 from Camel Cigarettes. And on your way out, there's a carton of camels for each of you. You were a grand team of challengers. Thanks very much, and good luck to all of you. Good Thank night. You. <laughs> and now let's have our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Lee Morgan. What is your name, please? My name is Lee Morgan. What is your name, please? My name is Lee Morgan. Panel, will you please follow along as I read this affidavit? I, Lee Morgan, am the director of the Scientific Introduction Service of New York City. It is our purpose to apply modern techniques of personality evaluation to matchmaking. Men and women in search of mates are interviewed and then given tests such as Rorschach tests, thematic apperception tests, sentence completion tests, and handwriting analyses. The data thus obtained is coded on a card and fed into an electronic brain, which sorts through thousands of other cards and comes up with an average of six scientifically selected prospects for each client. The success of our method is attested to by the fact that while the national divorce rate is one out of every five marriages, our average is one divorce out of 350 marriages, signed, Lee Morgan.
Well, panel, all three of these people claim to be Lee Morgan, director of the Scientific Introduction Service, bringing together romance and science. And let's start our cross-examination with Miss Kitty Carlisle. Thank you. I'm, I'm mad about this whole idea because I do believe that the romantic notion of two people falling in love with each other on sight is ridiculous. Marriage of convenience is the whole answer to our problem. Baby! Is... <laughs> How can you say that, Kitty? This is a scientific marriage of convenience, and I'm for it. But I want to know two things. How do you get enough people to make it come out even, number one? I <laughs> just need two. No, but they have to have six people here before it, it comes out right. Is that right? You, you not need six... Ne not necessarily six, six each people. each time, it says. Six cards yes. each time. Well, that'd be a card represents a person. Yes, but they have been before. It been is the where? One, <laughs> been up to see us before. It is the one person, the client, that we are getting the cards for. Thank you, Kitty. Robert, Robert reserve. Yeah, well, with, without, I mean, I hope you won't take any offense, or any three of you, or the real Lee Morgan, but I've given up on your kind of services. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> no, I went once couple of years ago, and they promised me Margaret Rose. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't. And look, uh, number two, uh, are you Lee Morgan? Yes, I am. What, how long have you had this service? We've had it four years. For four years. How many people, number three, are registered with your bureau, with your uh, uh, service? At the present time, 2,500. 2,500. Number one, how many are registered with your service? 2,500, 2, yes. Thank you. Uh, Polly Bird. Well... <clears throat> I don't believe in this. Oh, Polly. No, I don't. I, I believe... I believe in, in love at first sight. Uh -huh. If my husband ever took these tests... <laughs> well, we'd have never happened, I'll tell you. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, I'm sure that for some people it must be good. I just don't believe in it any for me. Any questions, Polly? No, I don't have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, actually, I am interested in one thing. Um, uh, the... Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Tom Poston. Would you care to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> Number two, what guarantees an applicant telling the truth to this machine or to you? I think he comes in his own interest and he has nothing to gain by not telling the truth. Can you tell me, number two also, who handles the Rorschach results? Mr. Rorschach. You mean who handles them? You mean who interprets them? Yes. We have a consultant come in. We don't attempt to do it ourselves. You don't, you don't. Number three, do you, are you familiar with uh, psychology, psych psychology and psychiatry? To some extent. Do you happen to know what synapse refers to? to nerve what? endings. What? Well, like nerve endings. Nerve endings. Nerve endings. Also question endings, too, I think. Thank you, Tom. Uh, again, it's time to vote, and without consultation, uh, please mark your ballots, panel, and will you kindly select number one, number two, or number three. Have the decisions been made? Well, the votes are in? I guess I have now, finally. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one on the basis of her straightforward, direct, and attractive answers. Thank you. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle, please. I voted for number two on the same basis. <laughs> I showed you. Well, how about that? Robert Q. I submitted all of your answers to my machine, and I came up with number one. Well, uh, Polly Bergen? Well, I voted for number two because um, he answered my questions the best, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, the votes are all in and the minds are made up. And now let's find out which of these three people is the real director of the Scientific Introduction Service. Will the real Lee Morgan please stand up? And number one, will you tell us who you really are? My name is Ethel Colby, and I'm the drama critic of the Journal of Commerce. No. That's it. <laughs> and I might add, for your information panel, that Ethel Colby is the only female member of the New York Drama Critics Circle, a very exclusive group. A very good one. Uh, number two, will you tell us? Well, number two, will you tell us who you are? My name is William B. Jones, and I am with the Jones Dairy Farm Sausage Company. <laughs> I, I 
always, I, I always wondered if there really were a Jones. I'm glad there is one. <laughs> well, now, I'm delighted to say there have been four incorrect votes, which means a total of $1,000 from camels on your way out. There's a carton of camels. You were some gay deceivers indeed. I congratulate you all. Good night and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And now let's have our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Jerry Hargrave. What is your name, please? My name is Jerry Hargrave. What is your name, please? My name is Jerry Hargrave. And panel, will you please follow along with me as I read this affidavit? I, Jerry Hargrave, work for an Australian animal exporting company. I recently docked in New York after 71 days at sea with a shipment of Australian camels. We rope these camels from jeeps in the central desert of Australia where they run wild. In several trips to the U.S. in the past five years, I have delivered to purchasers in America hundreds of Australian animals, including camels, kangaroos, ostriches, black swans, echidnas, and wallabies. Signed, Jerry Hargrave. <laughs> all right, panel, all three of these gentlemen claim to be Jerry Hargrave, the animal exporter, and we'll start the inquiry with Miss Polly Bergen. Thank you, Jim. Number two, uh, why are you smiling <laughs> so much? Wait a minute. <laughs> Any I don't person? know him. I swear I don't know him. Uh, number two... No, I can't ask him. Uh, number two, there's a, a very famous Australian song, and in it, a, a specific Australian tree is mentioned. Could you tell me the name of that tree? Uh, yes, that is a coolabar tree. A coolabar tree. Uh, number three, what is the name of that song? Waltzing Matilda. Uh, is that an answer, sir, will you ask? What? <laughs> That is my answer. That, that is right. Number one, um, what are echidnas? Echidnas, that's called, uh, Polly. Echidnas. Echidnas? Echidnas. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. What are echidnas? Uh, it's uh, like a porcupine that eats ants. It's the Australian version of the anteater. Oh, I see. Very nice around the house. Uh, what are wallabies, number three? A wallaby is a small kangaroo. A small kangaroo. Uh, um, do they have Quatamundi and all? Uh, you may never know, Polly. Tom Poston. Thank you. Uh, number one, why is it that dingoes haven't been able to be trained to uh, be domestic? Well, that's wrong because they, they, they have been trained. They, they make good pets. Thank you, number one. Had you go in there for a second? <laughs> number two. <laughs> number two, what is the name of the most dangerous snake possibly in the world? Uh, that's the uh, Australian tiger snake. Do you know anything more uh, about other kinds of snakes? Yes. What is the most dangerous South American snake? Do you happen to know? Uh, I believe that's the black member. Uh, number three, I can hear somebody talking. I yes, know. we're getting a little help from the audience. Uh, and, uh, number three, maybe the real uh, Would you speak Jerry up? Hargrave <laughs> is out there in the audience. <laughs> uh, number three, do you happen to know what family the bighorn belongs to? What animal family? No. Do you know, number one, the bighorn? Probably a sheep, I think, or you also know, a steer. Or it's a steer? Yeah. A steer is a bullock, you know. A, oh, a bighorn in that sense. No, that wasn't what I mean. <laughs> number two is hysterical. hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> He's thinking of a little bighorn. Number two, what is a, where does the fair de lance come from? Uh, would you repeat the question? Fair please? de lance. Uh, thank you, I'm Tom. Uh, Kitty Carlisle. Number three, where does the fair de lance come from? I haven't any idea. Are you all three Australian? Well, wh why don't you ask one, one two, three. Are you Australian? That's Jerry Hargrave. Yeah, of course we're all Australian. Are you all Australian? Yes. Yeah. You Australian number two? Yes. Yeah. I didn't know they had any camels in Australia. Where'd they come from? <laughs> well, never mind. What's an arachnid, number one? <laughs> <laughs> a witch? An arachnid. Oh, no, number not a two, what's an arachnid? I'm sorry, you don't know I number three either? No. Uh, what's a wildebeestie? A wildebeestie. A wildebeest. A wildebeestie. That's a... That's uh, a German fired man. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. What, what is it? It's... Uh, I think... We don't have them in Australia. I, officially, I don't know, but I think it's sort of a cow that went wrong in Africa. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what colored beaks do black owls have? Uh, 
black swans have? They have a red beak. Never yellow? No. Number three, what is the generic term for kangaroo? <laughs> Number two? No, I'm sorry, I can't. I, Number I, one? I can't. The, the name they reckon means I don't know, so I don't know either. And the kangaroo means In I Aboriginal, don't know? that's the story. I don't know if it's right. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Paul, uh, Kitty, and now Robert Kuhn. Oh, I don't know anything. But what is the name, number three, uh, what is the name uh, of one of the largest uh, wild animal uh, 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 houses in New York? The name of a man who runs an establishment known for selling numbers of unusual types of animals. Roland Lindemann, um, Catskill Game Farm. Um, that's about the biggest zoological park and playground in the USA. I meant New York City. Do you oh, happen to know the name of a dealer in New York who specializes in unusual animals? Mm -hmm. Or a Um There would be several. Yes. Uh, number two, <laughs> do, do you know the name of a, of a dealer in New York who specializes in... Uh, no, I Were have you number one? We never deal with anybody I in New York. <laughs> Boy, that's a, that was the one I... All right, now, a wallaby is a small kangaroo, number one. Yes. What is a large kangaroo called? Um, old man roo would be the, that's the big, big reds that we usually call old man. Called what? We call them old man roo. It just keeps rolling along. Oh, what is a, number two, what is... <laughs> sure you do. What is a, number two, what is a caladina? I'm number three, sorry. a caladina. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry too. Our time is up and I wish I knew what a caladina is, but I'll go through life not knowing, knowing and that's the way it is. So, panel, know. will you please mark your ballots for number one? Number two or number three, without consultation, please. I'm not, I'm not ready yet. I'm well, ready yet. Uh, I'm not either. let's, let's, uh, the time for contemplation is over. The thinking hour is at an end. You yes, swear yes, one yes. of these men, Mr. Yes. I have their affidavit. May I have your vote? All right. Okay. I'm ready. All right, oh, yeah, Tom. I'm, I'm wrong. Game then. three, yes. I voted for num numero uno because the voice from the audience told me that it was number one. <laughs> 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 Have you had any spirit messages, Kitty? <laughs> <laughs> the voice from number three told me that he came more from Australia than the other two. And I think that uh, I based my answer on that. Uh, Robert Q. I, 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 I go along with Kitty. I liked his answer to the, farm, the animal dealers, although I thought he might know that big man here in New York. But I still go for three. Polly? Why didn't anybody vote for number one? <laughs> well, I guess somebody... Uh, well, uh, number two and number three didn't know... Uh, uh, a third alarm is a snake, isn't it? Yeah. The very poisonous one that kills instantly and all that sort of thing. Kills caladinas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they didn't know. Number one probably didn't either, but you didn't ask him, so I voted for him. He looks very pale to shoot wild animals, but I guess I've it's shady sick. and... I've been terribly ill. <laughs> He says he's been terribly ill. Thank you, Polly. <laughs> the folks are all in. The vines are made up, and now let's find out which of these three gentlemen is the real animal exporter. Will the real Jerry Hargrave please stand up? Very good work, very good work. Number one, will you tell us who you are and what you do? My name is Gary Barker. I was born and raised in New Zealand. And I'm um, the, one of the New York correspondents for the Melbourne Herald group of newspapers. And a <laughs> fine job you've done. Number two. Uh, my name is Ted Burke. I've been in North America for the past five years. And I'm at present uh, working for the Australian Consulate General in New York City. Well, good job of work tonight. I see there have been two incorrect votes. That means a total of $500 from camels. And on your way out, there's a carton of camels for each of you. And uh, our felicitations. You did a grand job. And so did that voice from the audience, whoever it was. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. And good luck to all of you. And now, something short and sweet from our alternate sponsor, Helene Curtis. Well, I, I, that, one. yes, Polly, I he fear that's wrong. all, he was wrong, I fear we, that's all we have time for tonight, <laughs> save for this quite serious reminder, this is an exciting national election year, and every good citizen should dig down and support the party of his choice, and, and dig in and work for the party of your choice, and above all, vote in the big election, and of course the primaries too, and 
Now, panel, it's time to put tuck your ballots away for another week. What were you saying, Polly? I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. Nothing. Message. I said, now I know why nobody voted for number one. Why? Because he wasn't the right one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's through deductions like that that make it a pleasure to say good night. Good night. <laughs> good night. <laughs> and now this is Jim Fleming saying good night for Camel Cigarettes and reminding you, as Bud Collier always says, to tell the truth. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network.